Hello, my delicious co-creators. Lilu here on the Juicy Living Tour near Santa Barbara, my hometown, my birth town. I love it. It feels so special to be here. It's amazing that you were born here. That's phenomenal. I feel great. The weather is wonderful. We're with this beautiful stallion here. I know, my stallion, Deseable. Uh, love this boy. This is you know. a very, very special, yes. My, the Pegasus of my life. And we're going to have this conversation, Gary, about infinite possibilities and how really life... I'm really interested to get into the relationship part okay, this time. Sure. You're the founder of Access Consciousness. Correct. Uh, and you're living here this, this this amazing life. And I've learned already so much from this conversation. I mean, from you, just watching you, being with the horse and uh, being yourself. And you're, you're really, you're the same on, off camera. And I love that. Some people, not everybody's like that. I know, I know. And it's like, but I realized that's like, you know, it's like the thing is you want to be who you really are, yeah. no matter what. And it's like, if I'm ca on camera, I'm going to be me, <clears throat> you know, and we have this wonderful, you know, lady that works for us, Justine, who's always telling me what I shouldn't say. And every time she tells me I shouldn't say something, I say it. So it's like I finally warned her. I said, don't ever tell me what not to say, because that will be the one thing I will have to talk about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So relationship, that's a big one. That's a big What, why is that such a challenge for most people? Or why are they that? Why are we that free and happy to be? Well, first of all, relationship means the distance between two objects, <laughs> and it's like. And the thing is that most of us, instead of creating a connection with someone and being with them, we start to divorce ourselves and create distance right away. It's like one of the one of the precepts. I have a book called Divorceless Relationship, which is about how to create a relationship with someone without divorcing you. And what I noticed, even in my own relationships, is I would divorce me to try and make the other person happy. And, it's, uh, and it just doesn't work. You want to be in that place where you are present with the person, where you can allow them to be exactly who they are and have no point of view about what they choose. And they need to be that for you. And it's like I say, there's three, three things you need to have in order to have a fighting chance of having a relationship. Number one, they have to be good in bed. If they aren't good in bed, you're going to get rid of them eventually. Number two, they have to provide money or some kind of currency. Now, I have a lady who her boyfriend doesn't provide money, but he cooks and he does all kinds of things and cleans and takes care of things and takes care of her and takes care of all the excess stuff that she used to have to pay for. So he is providing money in that regard. And the third thing is they have to be willing to let you do whatever the hell you want to do whenever they want to do it, and you have to be willing to let them do whatever the hell they want to do when they want to do it. And it's like, if you have that, you got a fighting chance of having a great relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, attracting that right partner? How well, does that happen? It's like, hey, well, first of all, you got to get, you got to be willing to see the person as they are. Uh -huh. Most of us, the, I think the thing you got to do is like, take your most desirable list and tear it up. You know, it's like, I want a man who's, who's good looking and, you know, has money and, Will treat me kindly. Good friggin' luck. You know, and you gotta tear up that and go, okay, so what would I like my life to be like? What what can I add to my life with a relationship? Because a, a relationship should be an addition to your life, not a replacement for your life. And I see more people trying to replace their life with a relationship than create their life beyond a relationship. And it's like, what can this person contribute to me? What can I contribute to them? what would make this relationship work dynamically for me. And I think the first thing, first thing I recommend to people is number one, make a list of all the things you like to have in somebody you had a relationship with. Mm -hmm. Number two, make a list of all the things you would not like to have. Because most of us are willing to look at what we think we'd like to have, but we're not willing to look at what we think we'd not like to have. And I did that with my first wife. I had a list of all the things I'd like to have in a relationship. She was all of those, but she was also everything I would not like to have in a relationship. With my second wife, I got better, except I made one tiny mistake. I said I wanted somebody who would fight life's battles with me. What I should have said is fight life's battles alongside of me, because she fought me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like, oh, okay, I got exactly what I asked for. I just didn't ask for the right thing. Is that Dr. Dane? Uh-huh. They're on the they're on the beautiful ride. Uh, we're just Oh my goodness, so beautiful. Look at those horses, aren't they pretty? <laughs> Look at Dr. Dane, isn't he pretty? <laughs> it's the horse, it's the horse. <laughs> it's the horse, it's the horse, of course. Looking good. 
<laughs> Too cute. Yeah, so, so if you have missed that interview with Dr. Dane, please, you yeah, because that, yeah, that was awesome. Especially, kind of we did a part on sex. Oh, did you? Good. Yeah. He's good about sex. You have a little thing to say about sex? Yeah. Sex is something that you should do for the joy of it, not because you have to. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like sex should be something that's fun for you, not something you do from judgment. And what I noticed is most people do sex from judgment. It's like, it's like most men have learned to be aroused sexually by judgment because they watch, you know, porn to learn how to be a man. And it's like, and there's a whole lot of judgment in porn. And it's like when you have somebody who doesn't have judgment, it's like it's really hard for some men to get it up. And when a man can't get it up, it's because there's not enough judgment in the room for them to feel turned on. Weird, huh? Mm -hmm. And that's what they label in, uh, impotence. It's actually not impotence. It's a lack of judgment. If they go with somebody who has judgment, <laughs> they'll get it up just fine. Mm -hmm. Weird, I mean, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and very different. Here we're having very different conversation than what we would hear. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always talk about what nobody else will talk about. Yeah. So yeah, will Dane. Yeah. In life, the, the, whether it's the relationship or the sex or our relationship to money or whatever it is, the, 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 how, that freedom, because your latest book, was the, the keys to freedom, 10 keys to freedom, you know, how can, how can we really get into that freedom space where we're just like pure infinite beings? Actually, well, you, you talk about humanoids, huh? which yeah. is an interesting concept. Yeah. Can you just... Yeah. Well, see, it's like the, the humans are the people who always judge everything. Humanoids are always looking for what else? You know, it's like if you're a humanoid, people are always telling you, oh, you know, if you just stop going to all those stupid seminars and stuff and just sit down and watch television and drink a beer, you'll be fine. It's like, no, I won't. You know, it's like the reality is you as a humanoid, no, there's got to be more. Humans just don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, and if you get into a relationship with a human and you're a humanoid, they'll tell you how wrong you are from day one, nonstop, 24-7. And then usually what happens is you don't want to have sex. It's like makeup sex happens between humans, not humanoids. It's like if you, you know, piss off your partner when you're a humanoid, when, when they're a humanoid, it's like they don't want to be touched by you. They don't want to get near you for days. Don't make that mistake. You know, you got to learn that thing of being in allowance, which is one of the 10 keys, is to be in allowance and allow them to be what they are and have what they are and choose what they are and have no judgment about it. And it's like you live from that and then you get a chance of having a great relationship because mm -hmm. it can grow. And it's like, you know, it's like there's, there's five elements of intimacy. Honor, trust, allowance, vulnerability, and gratitude. Everybody goes, where's the love? I said, you ever notice that people will do unconditional love? I unconditionally love this person until they piss you off. And then suddenly it becomes very conditional. <laughs> Why is that? Because they don't really have gratitude for the person. They love them. And it's like when you love somebody, you have to come to a judgment. Because basically what it boils down to is there are about eight godzillion definitions of love. And so if I say I love you and you say you love me, we have no idea what each other are talking about. We just assume that if I say I love you, I assume you know what I'm talking about. If you say I love you, you assume I know what you're talking about. It isn't true. But if you're grateful for somebody, no matter what, I'm always grateful for people that lie to me because I know I can trust they will always lie. <laughs> so I don't have to have blind faith. And a whole lot of people have this idea that trust is blind faith. No, you don't want blind faith. You want awareness. And trust is realizing the person will do what they're going to do. Like in the United States, there's a lot of this talk about, he never puts the toilet seat down. And I go, yeah, why should he? And they go, because I might fall in. I said, yeah. It's like, I hate to tell you this, lady, but I fell in the toilet seat. I fell in a, you know, cold porcelain bowl once. And ever after, I have checked. I have never fallen again because I always check to see if the toilet is down. I never assume that it's going to be any place other than wherever it is. And it's like, you know what? Uh, I don't get you. You have fallen in more than once and you don't check all the time? I fall in, fell in once. I check all the time. I didn't like that experience. Apparently you like the cold, you know, the cold on your butt. You know, you need to look from a different place, lady. But there's a big thing about that. And I'll train him. Uh, you know what? You don't want to try and train your relationship. Uh -huh. If you're training the relationship, 
you're actually acting him, you know, acting like he's an idiot. That's not a good place to come from. That's not gratitude. If you have gratitude for the person, you realize their shortcomings, but you're grateful for their long comings. It's like, you know, <laughs> or they're coming along, whatever, you know, whatever it turns out. Yeah. But it's like you got to get that there's a different way to look at things if you're willing to recognize that, you know what, there's a different possibility with this person. What, what kind of contribution can this person be to my life should be one of the greatest questions you ask. Mm. You know, because... You know, you're not looking for somebody to just take out the trash. If you are, you hire a boy toy, you know, and use them and abuse them. But if you really want somebody to be in a relationship, you got to see what they contribute to your life. And usually what they contribute is something that you personally don't have in your repertoire. And that's an amazing thing when you get together with somebody who actually contributes to your life by bringing something to the party that you don't personally have. And when you have that then you have a platform off of which to create something greater. And that's what you got to look for in a relationship. If and you don't when, look for that, uh-huh. it isn't going to happen. But when things don't go like uh, go wrong or something, like a big thing happens in the relationship or yeah. we get annoyed, like what, what, what do you do with that? Do you still ask that question, how does no. it get any better no. than this? Everything that is to me, pock and pod that. Because the thing is, it's my reaction that's creating the problem, not the fact that they did it. My reaction is my unwillingness to have a different point of view not that their point of view was wrong but you know it's like what kind of point of view should I have you know with one of my wives it's like she would go off to do belly dancing and she would always have an affair with somebody while she was gone and she'd come back and tell me she was leaving me for them and say something kind of disparaging about body parts and uh, and why she was leaving me for them and then they would dump her and she would come back to me And it's like, and it's like, and I did it and did it and did it. And finally, went, you know, this, I just don't want to do this anymore. It's like, you're going to spend our entire life together doing this, going off and having affairs. I, I don't really enjoy that that much. Mm-mm. You know, I think it's time for us to end our relationship. And so we ended the relationship and she went to all of her friends and said, I don't know what's the matter with Gary. I've done everything, everything I possibly can to make it better. And he won't even talk to me about it. I went, what is everything? And when did you ever talk to me? She never talked with me. She always talked at me. And it's like you got to get the difference and you got to look at. So it's like, and the one thing I want to say is if you're in a relationship, ask yourself what eight things would have to change for you to make this relationship work. And if more than five of them are things that the person can't change, Your relationship isn't going to work. You know, with my last wife, I said, okay, so what eight things would have to change here? And I realized if I asked her to change those things, it would those six things that would have to change for it to work for me, that would be like asking the leopard to change its spots. Mm. You can't do that. And so I knew it wasn't kind to ask her because she'd try in her own way, but she'd never be able to do it because that's against her grain of her own reality. And you got to see when you have somebody who can't go where your reality is and can't have a reality that matches yours, that's what mm-hmm. kills relationships. People pleaser, how does that work? Oh, that's called romantic stupid people, like me. I was a romantic. I used to be a romantic, and I always believed that if you love somebody enough, it would change everything. I finally got to the recognition, I am just damn dumb, because it doesn't change anything. Loving somebody doesn't make them love themselves. And it's like if somebody doesn't love themselves, you can't convince them. You can't make them do it. You can't talk them into it. You can't, you can't kiss body parts enough to get that to happen. Just not, this isn't going to work. Mm-hmm. So I gave up romance. I still like romantic dinners. I still like, you know, flowers and all that kind of stuff. I enjoy that. But I never have the idea it's going to go anywhere. It's just for tonight and just for fun. And if you function in your life from just, For me, just for fun, and never tell anyone. You'll have a lot better sex life and a lot more fun. <laughs> and to deepen that the, the the relationship, if you want to feel more that, is that something you ask also those questions from Access yeah. Consciousness too? Yeah, you ask the questions. If you ask the question, okay, so what else is possible here? Or what could I be or do different today that I've never considered? It's like, yeah, you know, it's like most people get into the habit of creating the relationship from the same old, You know, it's like, this is the way we've always done it, so it'll get better if I just do more of it. That doesn't really work. 
what, you know, it's like the reason you fell in love with somebody in the first place is because you saw them and you realized, wow, this person is amazing. And you had no judgment of them and they had no judgment of you. Then you get into the relationship and you start judging how, oh, they might judge this. They might judge this. They might judge this. So you start cutting off pieces of you so they won't judge you, even though they haven't seen those parts of you and they can't have judged you yet because they haven't seen them. But rather than realizing, okay, you know what, just expose myself and be me. And if they jump, okay, it's not going to work. You try to, you judge you first. As though judging yourself first is the better way to, to handle things. It isn't. First of all, the thing that's most interesting is the things I always thought people would judge about me turned out to be things they didn't judge about me. And the things that I didn't think they would judge about me were all the things that they did judge. Don't you do that. Are all the things they would judge about me. And I went, okay things need to change and I need to be aware instead of mm. in la la land, in romance land, in stupid man land to try and figure out what's supposed to happen. Mm. And when we're aware, when we're in that awareness, then we can sense things the first yeah, the first time we meet huh, somebody. You can, sense. you can sense that place where there's a connection that can happen. And if that connection grows, then you got a good person to be with. And if it doesn't, you probably don't. Thank you so much, you. Gary, for this beautiful conversation and, and allowing us to come here in, the, in your ranch. What a beautiful experience. And I'm so glad you got to re meet my best relationship. Uh -huh. This is the one that takes care of me all the time and never asks anything of me, except uh -huh. that I pay for everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> but that's kind of like a marriage. And you've learned a lot from those horses. Yes, I have. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, and they give so much. And it's like you want somebody who contributes to your life so much that you walk away feeling better than when you arrived. Mm -hmm. And that's what I always get from the yeah. horses. My best relationships. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Big, big kisses, my beautiful co-creators from sunny California. I was going to say Florida, but no, much uh, not this as... Uh, California, yeah. 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 This is California. <laughs> big, big kisses. Bye-bye.